Good morning and welcome to the start of another vlog! Anyway, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a vlog. Not that I haven't been reading in that time, but um, two weeks ago my son came home from kindy and brought Gastro with him and decided to share it with the whole family, which was very kind of him. And last week was my last week of semester for the visual arts course I'm studying where I'm majoring in photography. So I didn't end up well, I did record a bit of a vlog for the week that we were sick, but I was not well enough to edit it, so it's just kind of slipped. And last week I didn't really get much reading done at all. So we're back to it this week. I'm thinking I'll probably do a end-of-month wrap-up of what I've been reading so that I can cover those things that I read while I was not vlogging. So uh, where I'm at at the moment with my reading is I'm partway through... I read last week... Um, both Alana the First Adventure and In the Hand of the Goddess, which is the second book in the Song of the Lioness Quartet. So I know I said originally that I was struggling to get back into reading Alana. I did feel it was a bit of a slog through the first chapter and a half, because there's a distinct lack of descriptions, but also a distinct lack of action. When I say lack of descriptions, we're talking about like Alana being described as she's got red hair, purple eyes, and if her hair was the same length as her twin brothers, they would be basically identical, which tells me absolutely nothing. And I am not someone who can picture things in my head when I read these stories, so, or just in general, I can't picture things. So having that little description drives me nuts. And yeah, you know, she sees the the image of the, the black city in the fire in the first chapter, and they just call it the black city, and I'm going, what part of the city is black? Is it a silhouette? Is it, you know, are the streets black? Are the buildings black? Are the roofs black? Is it a big city? A little city? Are the buildings like skyscrapers? Or, you know, everything else seems to be sort of medieval fantasy, so what does this city look like? I don't know. I need the description. Give me the description. At the moment I'm part way into the third book, which is The Woman Who Rides Like a Man, which I'm enjoying very much. And I'm still working on Mask of Mirrors. I'm through section one now. It's got five sections in the book, so section one has been really fun. Every time new characters are introduced and more intrigue and plot is being introduced and I just, I need to know what's happening. Apart from that, yesterday I picked up volumes two and three of Tokyo Ghoul, so I've got that to read as well. So, one of the things I should probably talk to you about, given that it is taking over my life a little bit at the moment, as it always does, is the Australian TV show Bluey. We are just getting the beginning of season three at the moment, which is so good. It is a kid's TV show and the episodes are only seven minutes long, but it is one of the most inclusive and amazing TV shows that has ever existed. They only started airing season three this week on Monday. So we've only had, I haven't watched today's episode yet, but um, I've seen five episodes so far, that must mean. The people that make Bluey are really good at being very inclusive and in a way that doesn't moralise the inclusion. We've had episodes in earlier seasons where there have been children who have babies who are still in, like baby siblings who are still in the hospital and it's not the theme of the episode, it's just a background thing. There's a kid whose dad is in the army and in this season we have our first, I'm assuming, deaf child. The child doesn't speak. They sign, I think they mouth along with it, but their mum speaks as they sign, so we get that little bit of context. And the show have made very sure that what we're seeing is proper Auslan. Genuine sign language in the show. And the kid being deaf isn't the point of the episode. The episode's called Turtle Boy, which is about a toy that's been left in the playground, and one of the, um, the main family we follow, Bingo, the younger sister of Bluey, is going into the playground and seeing this toy and playing with it and asking if she can take it home and her dad keeps saying no so she leaves it there and this other kid comes along and basically goes through the same process with their mum and I just love the fact that they do these inclusive things and they're there and they're not the point because these are people these you know families with kids in the uh, or parents in the army kids who anyone in the family who signs rather than speaks and, you know, families with babies still in the hospital, these are things that are there and are real and are not represented in children's media, and we need more of it. The other episode this season that has really hit me is the episode called Onesies, which aired yesterday, which is Friday. The episode basically talks about 
they have a, their mum has a sister who they haven't seen in four years and she's only visited them once in their life and the episode very strongly hints at the reason for this being that their aunt brandy can't have children of her own and that being around her nieces is hard for her because of it and it's such a deep flipping topic to put in a kids show but the way they do it is completely appropriate and they don't specifically mention, they just sort of say there's something that she wants that she can't have. But for anyone that does understand, there's just so much that's, you know, it, I just feel like it's going to do so much good for people to be able to see these things represented and to feel validated that this is something that happens. It's now Tuesday morning and I thought I'd give you a little update on where I'm at with my reading. I have finished The Woman Who Rides Like a Man and also... Lioness Rampant, which means that's all of the Song of the Lioness Quartet, the four books about Alana, that are completely finished now. I find these ones quite hard to talk about because I've been reading them. I like to reread books quite a lot, my favourites in particular, and Tomorrow Pierce has been my favourite since I think I was 11. So I know these books quite well and I've, it makes it very hard for me to talk about them. Despite not reading these for in a few years, maybe even 10 years or more at this point, they're still really good books. I still love them a lot. I think that once we get past the beginning of Alana the First Adventure, the writing really does seem to pick up, especially after Alana the First Adventure. That first book of the quartet, which I think was Tomorrow Pierce's first book, every sort of scene is um, very separate. So it's uh, quite tricky to sort of... I found it quite tricky to get back into because each part of the story seems to be disconnected from the rest. It's a series of almost little vignettes of Alana's time as a page. And once we get into... Actually, I think really from when we're introduced to Duke Roger of Conte, Prince Jonathan's brother, in that first book, the story begins to evolve into a more connected overall story. The Woman Who Rides Like a Man is a great continuation to the series. It covers the year after Alana has got her shield. She's 18 now. And she decides to ride south away from the city to get away from the pressures of basically what happened at the end of the previous book. I'm trying not to reveal too much in case there's people who want to go read book one and two. Yeah, she, she sets up on a journey to go explore the world a little bit and ends up meeting a desert tribe and basically getting caught up in some shenanigans that mean she gets stuck in one place for quite a while. And it's a really good book and I think she really develops as a character in this one and we've had two books focusing on her becoming a great knight and this book focuses a lot more on her magic and giving her a chance to learn that or putting her in a situation where she's forced to because as we know from the first book she's not really a fan of her magic. The fourth book in the series, Lioness Rampant, I adore because I think it really rounds off not just what happens to Alana, but what happens to all the side characters that we've grown to love along the way. It sort of completes Jonathan's story and George's story and really gives a sense of the particular arc of the worlds that she's living in coming to not an end, because, I mean, how can you end a world? But coming to completion, this particular sort of tale of the hero coming to an end. And I love these books. They're so good. So I have picked up um, Well Magic, was, which is the first of the Immortals Quartet. Uh, Dane is the main character in this one. She is a young girl who um, comes from a small mountain town and her family has been killed by bandits and it's basically her and her horse. And again, this is a reread. I've read all of Tamora Pierce's books, I think apart from some of her short stories. Basically, she's very gifted with animals. And she's come to this um, fair looking for work now that she's um, orphaned and homeless. And she meets Onua, who is the lady in charge of the horses for the Queen's Riders. I've reserved a copy of book two, Wolf Speaker, from my library because I had a copy years and years ago and I have a feeling I lent it to someone and never got it back, but I have not had it in a long time. At this point, I haven't read any more of Mask of Mirrors and I haven't read the two Tokyo Ghoul volumes that I picked up last week. 
However, I am planning on picking up Tokyo Ghoul today, hopefully. So I finally popped into the library to pick up the copy of Wolf Speaker by Tomorrow Pierce that I popped on hold. And I think um, my biggest problem with this book in terms of replacing the copy that I lost years ago is that it is going to be quite difficult, I think, to find a size that matches the paperbacks I have. Uh, I'm not feeling Mask of Mirrors at the moment. I'm pretty tired this week, I'm not really sure why, and I just... Mask of Mirrors is one that I want to be sort of fully conscious and present to engage with, so I might not read that today, but we'll see if maybe I get to it later in the week if I've had a little bit more rest.